Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Welcome back to Mufti Q&A The disciple says Assalamu alaikum Mufti One of my close family members has started to follow a group in Pakistan They are not very well known They state that the belief of the soul returning to the body after death is kufr As it goes against And is apparently rejection of certain verses from the Quran and they also say that the lengthy hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib is weak. I've attached a hadith or I've attached a document where they attempt to show why the hadith of Bara ibn Azib is weak. I was wondering if you had the time to provide a video or audio or even document. Send me the link only because not many people have this doubt. So I don't think there's a need to make it public. Then it says... Um, where these doubts from the PDF document are refuted so that I can send it to my family member proving that the hadith is authentic and that there is a jma of the salaf that the soul returns back to the body after death. This has created a lot of fitness because it is making my family member feel uncomfortable with praying behind us, etc. because we are maybe kuffar for believing that the soul returns back to the body. Jazakallahu khairan. We say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you as well. Uh, the whole entire question uh, needs to be broken down just a little bit. Not to make things too lengthy, too difficult, too complex, but it has to be broken down a bit. And that is first and foremost, uh, you said that the group isn't well known. And you said that they are a group. So the first question is, what group is it? And where do they get their ideologies from? Where, are they, where do their ideologies come from? Okay, are they a group of sunnah, of ilm, of knowledge, of hadith? Or are they a group of ignorance and lust, yani hawa, desires? Following what they want to follow, believing what they want to follow, okay, believing what they want to believe. Are they from the madrasa of that which is called al madrasa al aql or al aqlaniya, the aqlani school? Are they people who consider themselves to follow an ancient, traditional sect or jama'ah, etc. The first step is, in answering this question properly, is figuring out what is the group and what is the constitution of this jama'ah. That which is clear and obvious to me, and Allah knows best from the question, is that they are a group of people of misguidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely knows best. And that's because it's not the way of the people of hadith and the people of ilm to just pick and choose and take what they want and reject what they want and to just label a Muslim, let alone a group of Muslims, let alone the majority of the Muslims as kuffar. Those who believe in the reality of the soul being returned back to the body. So from the get-go, the group already is in loss. The group is already in loss. So, if we make a video and say that the hadith of Bara ibn Azib in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, the Musnad of Ibn Muhammad, if we say that the hadith is Sahih, and we refute their doubts and rebunk and or debunk or reject their different shubahat that they have, is that going to change the jama'ah? Does that change their constitution? Does that clear up their other misconceptions about aqidah and iman and tawheed and ghayb unseen? And what is sahih and what is not sahih? And what is the criteria for making a hadith authentic or daif? Is it just something based off of my hawa? I don't like the hadith, so it's daif. Hadith doesn't make sense to me, so it's daif. Hadith is contradictory to the Quran, so it's daif. And so on and so on and so forth. Is that the way of Ahlul Hadith? Is that the way of the people of knowledge? That's first and foremost, okay? As far as, uh, yani as, far as actual scholastic difference of opinion, that's a different story. Khilaf among the people of hadith. That's a different story. Criticizing and refuting a narration because it goes against other narrations or it clearly goes against the Quran. That's a different story. But the concept of the Aqlani school of thought and the Aqlani way of thinking, that's the very first step that you must take. And do not start fighting with them over these type of issues because they have different doubts and statements and this one and that one. The first thing that you have to do is to prove why the group is wrong as a whole. To prove why the group is upon misguidance. That's the very first step. 
بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى وفقاس لي فاني ممبر أو أي جروب of misguidance. شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى is a very beneficial book, one of the most beneficial books on عقيدة قاد الفتوى الحموية. الفتوى الحموية, which a summarized version of it is in English, the تلخيص فتح رب البرية بتلخيص الحموية في شيخ ابن عثيمين رحمه الله. Been translated some years ago. But the original work is still in, uh, I believe, uh, only in Arabic. Uh, in this fatwa, he's asked a question about what do the ulama of the Muslims say about Allah's sifat, the ahadith of sifat. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, first and foremost, but specifically the ahadith, because rejecting the Quran is a bit difficult for some people. Even though in reality they reject the Quran, but to outwardly say it is hard. But to reject the hadiths, to slander them, they're weak, they're this and that, is relatively easier for them. So he was asked about the hadith of sifat. Those hadith that talk about sifatul yad, sifatul waj, the hand of Allah, the face of Allah, the istiwa, the nuzul, Allah ascending the arsh, Allah descending from the arsh, Allah speaking, different attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these are hadith that the hearts of the slaves are between the fingers of Ar-Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala so he was asked what do the Muslims say about these hadith what do the ulama say about these hadith can you explain so on and so on and so forth before Shaykh Islam Taymi rahimahullah got into the proper understanding of these hadith are they authentic or not the hadith that state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak on the day of judgment the hadith that talk about Allah descending nuzul the hadith talk about al-istiwa, Allah's uh, uh, yani, ascending of the arsh, the hadith of Allah's ulu, Allah's loftiness, etc. Before he gets into whether these hadiths are authentic or not, mutawatir or, or not, proper understanding or not, make ta'wil of them or not, before he goes that far, Shaykh Hussain Taymi, he lays down a concrete, solid introduction that is extremely beneficial and need it for every single issue of difference of opinion among the people of the Qibla. And that is showing and stating, proving the virtue and the excellence of the early Muslims, of the Sahaba al-Kiram and those who immediately followed them. The Sahaba, why they were the most knowledgeable, why they were the most righteous, why they were the most pious, why they had the strongest fever for the deen. He proved this from the Quran, from the hadith and from common sense and from logic. And why did he do this? Before he even got into the sifat and the hadith of sifat. He did this to prove that if these people, if they're not following those people, then it's clearly misguidance. Because it is impossible for the best, most knowledgeable, most pious, most righteous, strongest, bravest Muslims to have been misled on something that those who came 300 years, 400 years, 200 years, 700 years later on were guided to that's impossible so did the early muslims believe this that the soul is not going to return to the body did the early muslims believe this using their minds in light of the unseen in light of what is mentioned in the quran what is mentioned in the hadith of the prophet and did they did they believe this did they have this practice if they didn't then we can clearly show and prove scientifically that this group in pakistan or any other country is upon dalala misguidance and that they are ignorant, and they are not to be followed, and they are not to be listened to. Once you have proven that with regards to your brother, your cousin, your uncle, whatever family member it is, then you won the battle. What I happen to get into the issue of ijma al salaf, is there ijma al salaf? Is the hadith of Prabhu al Azim sahih? And all these different intricate, complex issues, you don't have to go that far. The very first thing is to prove that this group is upon misguidance. And the reason why they are upon guidance is that they're not following the Sahaba. They're not following the pious predecessors in their understanding of the religion and the physical practice of the religion. And that they have other foreign alien aspects of understanding the deen, whether it's aql, intellect, philosophy, mythology, uh, the foreign Western influence, whatever the case may be. So this is a very important concept, is that you sweep the legs and the body will fall. Or in boxing, huh? They say what? In pugilism, it says, attack the body, the head will follow. Attack the body and the head will follow. So you have to destroy the credibility of the group to show that this group is not a group of sunnah, it's not a group of knowledge. 
then the rest will come. Show your family member, teach your family member why they have to follow the hadith and knowledge and ilm and the salaf. And not these people and those people and that group and this group. Once you do that, everything else becomes easy. Very beneficial principle for this group or any other group is to prove how they have strayed from the way of the earliest Muslims. Prove that. And then prove to your family member why it is mandatory and obligatory to take the example of the earliest Muslims. To take the practice of the earliest Muslims. Prove to your family member the importance and the necessary obligation of the understanding of the people of Hadith. Those individuals that took their religion from the pure, raw, organic source. They took their vegetables right from the dirt, right from the ground. They washed them off, rinsed them off, and cut them up in the kitchen. Processing, preservatives, this type of poisoning, this type of coloring, this type of additive, this type of insecticide, and so on and so on and so on and so forth. That's not the people of Hadith. They're in about Allah, about the last day, about the grave, about the Quran, about hijab, about the beard, about any issue of the deen is organic, is raw, right from the ground. You take the potato and it's dirt on the potato and you wash it off. You cook it into the pot, into your stomach. That's the similitude of the people of Hadith. The other different groups, the other different parties, the other different understandings and methodologies and schools of thoughts, they have coloring, they have preservatives, they have chemicals, they have things that were put into their foods, then they digested them. Their vegetables and fruits and their meats were sitting on a shelf for days and weeks and months with all types of things to preserve them and keep them safe and keep them from spoiling. That's not the people of Hadith. The people of Hadith, they eat organically. Their understanding of the deen is pure, pure, pristine. Before there was this philosophy and this mythology and this understanding and using the aql and using the mind. So that's very important for you to understand yourself and for you to teach and promote and uh, preach to your family member to show them the importance of taking the religion from the pure source. And that source is no other source than that of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That's my answer to this question. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely knows best.